Hey sketchy friends, I hope you are doing well. Happy World Watercolour Month. Uh, completely, <laughs> completely missed that, but um, I keep seeing it popping, popping up and it is halfway through July now, so uh, I have kind of zoned out for the last, uh, last couple of weeks, I guess. Um, very busy here, trying to prepare everything to move to South Africa, which is uh, one week away now. So yeah, it's busy, busy this end. In this sketch, I just wanted to show you guys my process that I've kind of been playing with a lot recently, where I do a wet on wet background and do a bit of a sharper foreground object. So here I'm going in with my indigo. I'm definitely overemphasizing the um, the moody sky in the photograph. This was actually a photograph I took myself whilst I was out walking with a friend along the River Lee in the kind of Hackneywick area of London. And the river is just filled with loads of these little narrow boats or canal boats or houseboats or whatever you want to call them. Um, and they just all have their own little personalities and characters and decorations and I just absolutely love them can't get enough of them so yeah I just thought this one was just I don't know something very beautiful with the plants all the way along the top and so yeah I'm just keeping it very loose in the background and not worrying too much about colours bleeding into other colours and just to give it a bit of a moody kind of atmosphere really the kind of approach that I'm going for here is if you think of a, a photograph or think of what a camera can do, it can make the background nice and blurry and keeping the sort of main object of the photograph in focus, which gives everything kind of a, a, a nice, interesting depth of field. So that's vaguely the concept I'm working with here. So I am working in a newish sketchbook here. It's a, it's I got it a long time ago, but I just haven't used it much. It's been here in the UK for a, for the last year or so. Um, it's a Stillman and Burn beta sketchbook. I am trying to get used to the different type of paper. This is something to take note of when you buy a different sketchbook. You know, the paper does react a bit differently, especially when you're doing things like wet and wet techniques. So, you know, it might take you a little a while just to kind of settle into the sketchbook. So the paint is definitely behaving a little bit differently than what I'm used to in the Hanamula, but but that's fine, you know. I'm still getting the wet and wet um, blends and stuff. Um, they're just kind of reacting a bit differently. So you'll notice that I mapped in the basic idea of the sketch with my pencil. I then did the wet in wet background and now I'm just going in with a fine liner, just a Unipen fine liner. I think this is 0.1 and just kind of putting in all of the line work that I want to and I am just sort of going in and um, mapping in some, uh, just putting in a bit of detail in the foreground in the foliage. Mo mostly it's just kind of going to be loose wet and wet stuff but in the foreground there's just some nice leaves poking up and stuff and I think that makes quite a nice interesting composition where you've got a bit more detail in the foreground. Now, as usual, I am using my White Knights watercolour paints and for the large areas of watercolour in the background, I was using my Escoda number no. 10, uh, Escoda Reserva number no. 10 travel brush. And out of the set of three that I have, the 10, the 6 and the 2, the number no. 10 is the one I basically use all of the time. Um, I don't really use the 6 and I rarely use the 2. The two brushes that I could just completely get away with for 99% of what I do is the number 10 Escoda Reserva brush that I just mentioned and this Rosemary & Co um, travel brush which is a dagger brush. I'll put the link in the description below. I absolutely love this brush. It's so versatile and it's just my favourite brush I think that I own. So on the boat I'm just coming in with pretty strong colours and I am definitely emphasizing the difference between the lighter areas and the darker areas, just exaggerating those, just to really push um, the contrast. Obviously my style is not realistic, I quite like this kind of fun, quirky, graphic kind of style, you might even say a bit cartoony or whatever, but that's my um, <laughs> that's my style, so that's definitely not realistic as you guys probably know already. Um, so yeah, just really exaggerating certain areas of this sketch. Now this is super time-lapsed um, video, but if you're interested in the full-length um, tutorial, 
you can head over to Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash urbansketchingworld, and the full-length tutorial is over there along with my commentary. So this is an 11-minute video here, but this sketch took me an hour and a half, probably with some faffing in the middle, because, you know, wait for bits to dry, change the music, make a cup of tea, that kind of thing. Also, a lot of the time when I film these sketches, I don't really think them through massively or think of the concepts or whatever. I just kind of go with it. I find a picture or I take a picture that I like in this context, in these kinds of videos, just to demonstrate, you know, how I would go about sketching this subject matter. So it's not necessarily a right or wrong way in any way at all. I'm just showing you guys like how... I would approach this subject matter in my style and also trying new things as well. So for example, as I've said, you know, in the last few months, I've kind of developed this liking of doing a wet and wet sort of soft focus background and just trying to add a real sense of atmosphere to things whilst keeping the foreground sort of sharper. So I've got a couple of other videos that, that use that idea. So I'm hoping this just gives you guys a bit of encouragement to try try out something different with your own sketch, really. And mess around and try and create a bit of a bit of atmosphere. So I do get out my uh, flat brush here which I don't really use very often but I found it and um, I thought oh okay maybe I'll use that and I just forgot how useful a flat brush can be especially in terms of painting things that require a bit more of a straight line. So like this water for example and it was really easy to just cut in around the boat using the flat brush so I highly recommend um, getting a flat brush if you don't have one because they're a lot of fun to play with and they do make certain painting certain areas so much easier especially if you need some straight lines or flat edges they're, they're really great and then these are my secret weapon my <laughs> Faber Castell brush pens these are the brush pens the bees not the soft brush ones there are there are softer nibbed ones um, and it's a set of six markers, uh, grey markers, three cold greys and three warm greys. And I just love adding these on sort of towards the end of a watercolour sketch just to really make some certain areas pop. Obviously with the brush nib you can um, get a bit more control and yeah you can just really add some shadows to certain areas and really... It really brings a nice bit of life to everything. So if you haven't tried this uh, approach yet, I, I feel like I have shown the, these pens in quite a few of my other videos, but if you haven't tried this approach yet, then um, do grab a pack and have a go. I don't use it in every sketch, but when just when there's some nice shadows and I just feel like it's going to add quite a lot of pop, I do add them. They're India ink, so they, I think they're waterproof. But I usually add, add them at the end. I don't really ever paint over them. Um, and they are light fast. So if you're doing a painting that's going to be hung on the wall in the sun or whatever, then uh, yeah, you're all good. So now I'm going in with a thicker fine liner. This is probably a 0 0.5 or something like that. Just to add thicker lines to certain areas of the sketch. Again, just to, to make certain areas pop out a bit more. It's very easy to overdo this step, so t take it easy. Um, but yeah, you can add thicker lines to certain areas just to make things pop out. So that is my sketch, guys. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this process. Um, as you can say, see, this is quite a fun sketch with a lot of atmosphere. And yeah, I hope it's sort of given you a bit of inspiration to try out a few different techniques in your own sketches. Um, do check out the video description below. I've got the link to my course and my book and the bits and bobs that I use. And yeah, I'm just wishing you a happy World Watercolour Month that I've kind of uh, has passed me by. Um, and I will see you in the next video.